So I hop in, split grip, club is above the ball on purpose, back to hip high, get the club all the way down to the ball. What a good, it's a beautiful drill to learn this. Here, here, chest and right shoulder are down and turn. So I have my side bend, a little bit of oblique crunch. I'm gonna put the club in my hands, I'm gonna feel the same thing. Like, wow, holy cow, do I feel like my right side is crunched down compared to normal. And now I'm gonna hit with that same feel. Hey guys, Eric here out at the Bethlehem Golf Club. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to cover the ball like the pros, what covering it means, and really my favorite drill to learn to cover. It can make a huge difference in your ability to hit the ball solid day in and day out. Before we hop into that, I want to talk about CogornoGolf.com where you and I can work together on your golf game regardless of where you are in the world. And it's where I hang out every day. You guys see here in the YouTube videos, in the YouTube comments, I'm there. But to really be able to expand upon that and help you guys, I need to see your swing on video. That's where you can send it in. We have a group of world-class coaches and an awesome community of golfers. I'm in there literally every day talking with everyone and posting content it doesn't come up here on YouTube or anywhere else. It's awesome, awesome community to help you improve your game, take your game to the next level. You also get all of our practice plans, all of the master classes. It's a ridiculous deal that you get in my opinion. You're gonna absolutely love it. We'd love to help you with your game. We'll put the link for Cabrano Golf down below. Now, covering the ball, right, and, and this drill we're gonna talk about in a minute. Covering the ball, from my perspective, if we look at both of the face on and down the line, when I take my setup position, I'm bent over, right? I'm bent over towards the ground. So my chest and my right shoulder are a certain distance from the ground. I'll have to look at what that actually is sometime because I always just make up numbers, I'm not sure what it is. But let's call it like four feet for me, okay? Six foot tall, chest, probably we'll call it four feet. So the setup position, my chest and shoulders are four feet from the ball. The point being, and what covering the ball is, is by the moment of impact, my chest and shoulders are no more than four feet from the ball. In fact, they should be less than four feet from the ball. That would be covering it. If I took this setup and I bent over and turned towards the ball, I'm quite literally covering the ball. I'm over the ball. It's like I would like cover something with a blanket. I put something over it. Me getting farther from the ball, taking the blanket off the ball, would be uncovering it, right? So the more my chest and shoulder got farther from the ball during the downswing, that would be not covering it. Why is that not a good idea? If I need to get, well, let's go back to the setup. Let's say my setup is four feet, clubs on the ground, right? My arms are fairly straight. If I get farther than four feet, how do I get to the golf ball? I have to really unload my wrist angles. I have to lengthen somewhere else because I got farther from the ball. Now you tell me from face on and down the line, how many really good ball strikers look like this at impact? Close to zero, right? Now, how many really good ball strikers look like this at impact? Most all of them, right? If I'm posing this correctly, most all of them. Their right arm is bent, their right wrist is bent at this moment in time, and their chest and shoulder are down and turned. They're down and turned. That's what covering the ball is. Now, there's a whole host of things that could happen earlier in a swing that would lead you to not covering the ball. The primary things with those would be a club face that's too open. That would be that the toe gets behind the heel. So if you check this out, here's the toe right on top of the heel. Right, if I look at my setup position, if we can see this okay, here's the toe and heel right on top of each other. Here's my spine angle. So see how that's at the same angle there? Can we see that okay, Mayor? So there's my, there's my square. Now when I swing, I need to have that toe back on top of the heel during my downswing, or have the toe just slightly in front of the heel. Either one of those two can work. If you watch your swing and you notice this dirty seven iron, seven iron, and the toe's behind the heel, you're in trouble. You're probably not gonna cover the ball. You're gonna throw too much when you come down. So make sure your club face angle is good. That's gonna be dictated by your grip and your wrist angles primarily. We've got loads of videos on that. And the second thing is gonna be a steep shaft. If your shaft comes too steep coming down, you're always, always, always gonna stand up to fix that. To hit the ball and to cover it, look at my shaft angle, right? See, it's fairly low, right, compared to normal. So if you get a steep shaft and the shaft's out here, 
I gotta hit the ball down there, I'm always gonna stand up to fix that. I'm not gonna cover it. So club face angle, number one, and then the shaft being too steep, number two. You have to make sure you have those good. Again, we have loads of videos on those things. But let's assume, right, we feel pretty good about those. And hey, I, I, Eric, when I come down to impact, I'm standing up, man. I'm standing up, standing up. I can't cover it. What do I need to do? My favorite drill for this is what we would call a split grip drill. So if you take your lead hand on the club like normal, take your trail hand, for me my right hand, and put it just under the grip. So we can see that there, okay, like this. It's just under the grip at setup. So right here, that's how I take my setup position, just under the grip. Now, what's the point of that? Well, when I put it underneath my grip, like here, effectively what I'm doing is, look at my setup. Now the club head is where? It's above the ball, right? So what do I need to do with my chest and right shoulder to get to the impact, to get to the ball? I need to lower it. I need to get closer to the ball. I need to, everyone together, cover the ball, okay? So what we're doing is we're pre-setting this club at a shorter distance by gripping down. Normally my hand would be here. So I'm sliding it down the grip several inches. So I'm shortening the club distance. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the club back to about hip high to start. See, my hands are still split here. And for me to get down to the ball now, I need to feel my chest and my right shoulder get closer to the ball than I was at setup and turn towards the target. So from here, my chest and shoulders closer to the ball and turn towards the target. Now, if you're used to standing up from here, I mean, that is gonna feel like you're kissing the ground. It's gonna feel like your chest and shoulder are really close to the ball. Now, the other nice thing about the split grip here is what does it do? It keeps my right arm a little bit bent and it keeps my trail wrist a little bit bent. Those are the impact alignments that I wanna have when I'm at impact. So chest and right shoulder down, right arm bent, right wrist bent. That allows me to have my handle forward and really compress the ball with all my clubs. So how I like to practice this is do two rehearsals, one hit. So I'd go split grip, hip high, get to impact. So holy cow, I feel so low, Eric. Yes, good. Going back to here, get back to impact. Oh my God, I feel so low, good. Now I'm gonna come in and hit a shot and I'm just gonna do like a hip high, hip high. And I'm gonna feel the same exact motion. So my right shoulder feels way down, like I'm doing an oblique crunch. My right arm feels very bent compared to normal. It's gonna feel like I'm gonna hit it fat if I do what I normally do with my arms and my wrist, which we'll talk about in a second. So I'm gonna feel the same thing here, just with a half one. And I'm gonna be able to compress that golf ball. So same thing, let's do one more round of that and then I'll explain what you have to do with your, with your arms and hands here. So I hop in, split grip, club is above the ball on purpose, back to hip high, get the club all the way down to the ball. What a good, it's a beautiful drill to learn this. Here, here, chest and right shoulder are down and turn. So I have my side bend, a little bit of oblique crunch. I'm gonna put the club in my hands, I'm gonna feel the same thing. Like, wow, holy cow, do I feel like my right side is crunched down compared to normal. And now I'm gonna hit with that same feel. Yeah, and that's about as good as I can hit them. Now, I said before, right, think about this. How do you match your arms and body? If my chest and shoulder normally gets farther from the ball, my arms and hands have to do what? Lengthen. My right arm has to straighten, my wrists have to release. High dynamic loft, no club face control, bad contact. So if my right shoulder and my chest get closer to the ball and turn towards the target, that means I have to do what now? I have to shorten those levers. How do I shorten levers? Check this out from down the line. Here's the club as far away from me as possible. Now if I bend my arm, that club gets closer to me. And if I bend my wrist, the club gets even closer. So here again, here's the club as far away from me as possible. Imagine that's a wall. So if I want to shorten that, I would bend my right arm, which it should be an impact, and I'm going to bend my right wrist. Now, relative to the wall we started, if I had like a line on that, that's way farther from there. It also, from face on, what did it do to the club when I bend my right wrist? It put it way more back behind my hands. Why would club behind my hands be good? Shaft lane, right? Shaft lane. So you have to, the more you do the chest and right shoulder down, keep your trail arm bent and keep your trail wrist bent and have no fear about that. That is what all of the good ball strikers do. So one more time, split grip, down to the ball. Split grip, again, clubs maybe what, two inches above the ball? Boom, it's like a hockey stick sort of feel. 
back in here, I'm going to get that same feel. I feel way crunched over. My right arm feels very bent. My elbow feels close to my hip. My right wrist feels bent. The shaft feels forward compared to normal. Let's go ahead and feel that same thing. Yeah, and guys, I mean, that's, that feels to me like I'm going hip high, hip high with a seven iron. And I mean, that probably went 165, 170 is what it looked like. So anyway, the point of that is you get the handle forward, you take a seven iron and you turn it into a six iron. Why would you want to do that? Well, do you want to hit your seven iron 160 or 175? 175 or 190, right? We all want to hit it as far as we can and hit it solid. So that's how you cover the ball. You want to cover the ball. You want to shorten your trail arm and trail wrist. I would practice like that. Two rehearsals, one hit, do hip high, hip high, use video to confirm. I'm telling you, a lot of us, me included, who had early extension and stand up, you're gonna feel like your shoulder and chest are so far down and forward and you're gonna watch on camera and you're gonna just like maintain your angles. So normally you get farther, you're gonna feel this, and probably me when, you, when I was doing it, it just looks normal. So you have to feel a lot more than you think. If you guys liked this video, which hopefully you did, please click that gray little thumbs up button down below the video. Click subscribe if you haven't, leave a comment. We're gonna put a card on the screen similar to this right shoulder sort of covering it feels during the downswing. Also gonna put kagornogolf.com. Go check that out, we'd love to work with you there.